Hey everyone, uh, welcome back to Cybersecurity TV. Uh, this week we're going to talk about the uh, number four items on the OAuth uh, top ten list, which is XML external entities. And I've also, like you know, got comments from a few people uh, that they want to understand what the XML external entities are. And this was actually a new addition to the uh, latest OAuth top ten. It was not part of the previous list, but uh, increased use of the XML parser. Uh, in the recent applications, uh, might have caused like you know bumped up this uh, ranking of this vulnerability, and that's why it's included. So first off, let's understand what are the XML external entities. But before that, we need to understand what is XML, right? So the XML stands for Extensible Markup Language, and uh, you can think of XML as in like you know create a custom form in order to store and transform uh, data between multiple parties. And the the cool thing about the XML is it's a self-descriptive, uh, which means that you can define tags and document structure to create a custom template. So imagine you need to uh, write a document in a certain format, and you want your customers to also write a document in a certain format so it can be shared among them. You can define the template, and they'll they'll uh, like you know uh, populate that form or the template, and you can easily share and pass the information. So that's the XML. Now, the OWASP definition of the XSE is many older or poorly configured XML processors evaluate external entity references within XML documents. External entities can be used to disclose internal files using the file URI handler, internal file shares, internal port scanning, remote code execution, and denial of service tags. We'll see some of the like you know uh, real-time attacks or uh, impacts of the XSE. But this is the OWASP definition. Now, let's break it down. So if the application, uh, for example, treats un untrusted data, uh, so Im uh, this is very similar to like you know SQL injection vulnerability or any injection vulnerability. This is just happening on the XML documents or XML parser. So if the application treats untrusted uh, data the same way that it treats uh, trusted data, then there is potential for either malicious or unintended behavior to occur. So as I said, like XSC is a type of injection attack, but only applies to the XML. Now what's the uh, XML parser? So the XML parser is, uh, one can say like, you know, um, for example, in the backend, in the application backend, we have a web server which processes the data or from the user and then processes and sends the request back to the database, and database then eventually fetch the data and give it back to the user, right? So that's that's a uh, processor for the uh, normal web request. Now, the XML parser is uh, the similar thing. So here, it's actually uh, processing the data, uh, which, is, which is part of the XML document. Now, in the XML document, you also have, like, you know, uh, sometimes uh, X, external documents so it refers or it fetches from the external document like you fetch like external dependency in your code base so for example javascript or something so similarly in xml document if you are passing an external entities or external documents which are not maybe not trusted right because you're not sure because you are inheriting that those uh, documents from the external source so uh, just imagine this as being like you know you receive an email uh, with a mysterious link in it. Uh, now this link could be legitimate or it could be malicious. So you can think uh, about the external entities in the XML document as being similar to these mysterious links in your email. Sometimes they might point you to the valid data source, or other times they might uh, cause the behavior unintended behavior, uh, which is not expected. So that's why it's very very much important that like you know whenever you as a penetration tester whenever you come across the um, application which using the XML parser, then of course you want to verify what's the version of the parser because several times the uh, the version itself has some uh, vulnerabilities or it's not patched uh, with the latest uh, updates or something like that, or it can also be like you know if it's accepting the external references then you verify whether you can give like you know maybe a malicious reference and it still be able to execute and it will execute so that's that's the whole 
console of like what's the XM, XML uh, external external entities attack. Now the first example we're gonna take a take a look at is OpenID. So this actually happened back in 2013, um, and this was found both on Google and Facebook who were using OpenID. Uh, and uh, if you're not aware of what the OpenID is, it's a it's an like you know a way to authenticate the user. So for example, let's say you have a new app on your phone. Now you can create a, a new username. You can sign up the account by creating a new username and password, or you can use sign using the same user password that you would use with the Google, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn or Amazon. So you can that's an open ID technique where it shares the username. Actually we're gonna look into much details. I'm gonna do a session on in like AWS provide this service where you can use, implement the open ID very easily. So we'll we'll discuss in details how to configure that. But what happened during the FBI and Google account was the attacker was was able to found the XSC on OpenID, which would allow anyone to read private files on the web server. Now, one can potentially do like a remote code execution, uh, as we saw in the OWASP definition. That's one of the impact or uh, of the XSC. So X RSE or remote code execution can be extremely exciting because one can run or process whatever like you know commands they want to run they have a full control on the on the remote server the second example of the xml uh, attack is the xml bomb now this is very straightforward so for example an attacker can start out with a small string let's say lol as we we can see here now and then what will happen is each of those LOL string will expand into multiple strings. So for example, you can see LOL1, now LOL1 expanded into this one. Now LOL2 expanded this string and this string. And it will, so each of these expand to many more LOL strings and so on. So what starts out is small, fairly harmless. So when you first receive this string, you'll see like, oh, there's nothing bad with that but then it will end up taking up so much time and computer resources that it causes a denial of service rendering the system inoperable so that was another uh, like you know uh, legitimate attack uh, happened in the in the past on the xml uh, parser now the critical question is how do you prevent of course the best way to prevent is disable access processing now this is not possible every time you have to use the access processing but if you if you're not using it then probably you should turn off uh, like you know uh, access processing at least from the untrusted website so for example when you receive uh, un like a suspicious or unexpected email uh, in your inbox you shouldn't be able to click it uh, and op open the associated website that's a kind of what happens when you disable external entities for your external parser and I would also recommend checking out the um, XML uh, WASP cheat sheet on the XML external entity prevention, as it has like you know much more details on how to disable the entities uh, for a variety of different computer languages and XML processors. Uh, second uh, thing is uh, second technique we can use is whitelisting and validating input. Uh, this is similar to uh, blacklisting and whitelisting approach or allow or deny list that we have talked several times in the uh, injection or the cross site scripting attacks, uh, where you would define list of uh, uh, payloads which are allowed or define list of uh, uh, references that which are allowed in the XML document, and if that's not uh, if that's not the case, you would uh, simply discard it. Or you can also uh, do the blacklist approach, but of course, whitelist is much more better, but then yeah. Blacklist, you can also specify which data is not allowed in the XML document, header, and nodes. And whitelisting is considered to be more safer and therefore preferable to blacklisting because it's much more easier to identify discrete set of known positives than it is to enumerate the set of all negatives. And the last thing uh, we briefly touched upon earlier is about the upgrade all the XML processor and libraries. Uh, why is this so critical? Because, of course, XML processors get updated all the time. And sometimes uh, the application is using the XML processor, which is no one is maintaining. So it's out of date, it's deprecated, recalled, 
there is no maintenance on it there is no support for it so with those scenarios there is like you know uh, of course it's vulnerable to so many attacks so uh that's why uh it's very much important uh like if you want to avoid the access injection you need to make sure you are using the external processor libraries that are supported and you will also want to make sure that the latest patches are applied to the latest upgrades are installed so when when you are doing the pen testing make sure you check for uh, check for the uh like you know any existing vulnerabilities or cves for the xml processor because that's also a big uh, risk even though you are not able to exploit it but that's still okay because you as a pen tester you might not have enough time to figure out and exploit it but as an uh, attacker uh who has all the time in the world can easily find out uh, the open or public vulnerabilities uh, related to the xml version and then exploit it so uh that's uh, that's all we want to discuss i want to give a highlights on what the xsc attacks are and how do you prevent it what are the examples let me know if there are any other prevention techniques that you have used or recommend in the comment section below um this concludes our discussion on the xsc uh, please hit the like button or subscribe button uh, if you enjoy this video and uh, receive notification for the weekly videos uh if you have any other questions or recommendation on any other topic that you want me to cover uh, feel free to uh, comment below and if nothing else i'll see you guys next week